Hey everyone, Joe Waxman here again. And in this video, I want to look at the chart of comedian, actor, writer, musician, Steve Martin. Funny guy. Um, he's been in a lot of great movies. I love one of my favorite movies that he's done is The Jerk. Um, share the screen. That's a movie that, just, you know, it's just a classic. I want to watch it again soon. All right. Let's look at his astrology chart. Um, most amazing thing about Steve Martin's chart is that um, there are very few aspects, essentially. Very few strong aspects, very minimal, um, almost no negative. Really, uh, very few aspects altogether. I mean, there's this prominent in conjunct to the south node but i generally don't look at that so much uh aspects to the nodes unless they're square or conjunct uh i haven't found them to be useful um but if you just look at that you know if you know nothing about astrology and you're just like well it seems pretty fairly uneventful or you know, at least in the terms of like conflicts. Um, and then you look at his life. I mean, Steve Martin's a pretty uneventful guy. And not to say that's not a negative. I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, he's done a lot. And he's actually, I don't mean uneventful. Um, um, there's not a lot of conflict surrounding him in, negatively in any way, at least that I know of. Like it never shows up. Like I've never heard anything really bad. Like uh, there's no like sensationalism surrounding him, no like, uh, I don't know, negative stories or hit pieces or dramatic drama, very non-dramatic kind of life, but very funny. So look at this first house. I mean, ascendant in Leo, Pluto conjunct the ascendant and then sun uh, in the first house in Leo right there. That's ex incredibly strong. Right, because Leo Ascendant on its own has this bright, sunny energy. It's 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 very uh, you know great for any sort of performance. Lights up the stage, lights up a crowd. Uh, loves to be the center of attention. Really shines like the sunshine. And Pluto conjunct the Ascendant also extremely powerful. Brings in that Scorpionic element, which is also a fixed sign. Very deep um uh tons of um what's the word allure and power sexual mag magnetism pluto is very magnetic right and these two signs um pluto and scorpio which you know uh, sorry leo and scorpio which uh, pluto represents you know one one part of scorpio um are two of the most powerful right and dynamic um you know you'd think leo is probably like the most popular sign but actually like in astrological circles anything having to do with scorpio is actually the most popular which is really fascinating um because well if you flip the dial and put scorpio on the ascendant and leo's right at the top right so like you know the, the that's why this and this is the public arena so i think that energetically that's why um scorpio gets so much attention even though scorpio is a water sign and kind of hidden like scorpio nature is like protected and hidden and, and you know it doesn't doesn't come out like leo which is really interesting that, that that scorpio is actually the most um popular sign when it comes to uh astrology um like astrology videos or astrology topics people always want to know about scorpio right so anyway this right here is great for stage presence um pluto and leo that's the boomer generation uh pluto really um brings out that uh the the depths of, of the leo quality um some people have said that pluto is exalted in leo but what it really is is whether it is or not it's it's very powerful, very strong, very fixed, and really um, it develops that the ego because Leo 
represents the ego. It represents the um, the individuation of the person. And so like the these these boomers, especially if it's on the ascendant, um, really have a developed, well-developed sense of self, you could say. So that's very prominent. And then, I mean, he's got the sun there and sun in the first house is, it's, I mean, it is very egotistical. There's tons of pride and ego, but like Leo on the ascendant, it's, I mean, it's forgivable because of how much energy they can bring, whether it's to the stage or to, to a relationship or a crowd of people. It's like the sunshine. And like I always said, Leo, we love Leo because it's like going to the beach. It chases away our depression, you know? So, and, you know, when somebody's on the stage, we shine the spotlight on them. Well, this is like a natural spotlight when you have a Leo ascendant, especially with the sun in Leo on the ascendant. So, I mean, he just goes on stage and he's just like bright as the sun, you know, and powerful as well with that Pluto there. Um, Pluto is, is, is a, is a charmer in a very, in a very deep sense, a charmer in the sense that of like, sort of like a snake charmer or a hypnotist, right? They just have this, this, this incredible power over you to dominate you. All right, so that is very, you know, very telling of Steve Martin's success and his ability to, uh, you know, be in movies, get famous, be a stand-up comedian. He's also a musician. He's also a writer. Um, he plays many different roles, and that's also very Plutonic. That's trans this transformation. He actually started out in philosophy, which is interesting because, um. Not we could look at the ninth house for philosophy. That's Mars. Mars is in Gemini in the eleventh house, uh, conjunct Uranus. Um, it's posited by Mercury, exalted, and in domicile conjunct the second house cusp. But also we could look to Jupiter, which is in Virgo. So I mean, like, why would why would he pick philosophy first of all? like as his first college major, when he's still discovering himself, he doesn't even know who he is. Um, philosophy is not very prominent in his chart, but what we can say is that because of the synodic cycle, um, if we leave the outer planets out of it, and we just look at all the um, other planets, well then Jupiter, Jupiter is a very mature planet, right? You know, Mars, I mean, Neptune, yeah, as well. And that we look to for creativity and acting and um, things of that nature. But Jupiter would be philosophy. And Jupiter is a very mature planet, but it is um, in detriment in Virgo. So he didn't stay with, with philosophy, obviously. Even though he there's a part of him that is philosophical, his philosophy tends to be mercurial, right? Because both... The, Senate, the ninth house Lord and Jupiter are in Mercury signs. So instead he became like, he couldn't really get into philosophy. His philosophy became mercurial and, and small minded because Mercury deals with the details. So instead he moved into theater and then he dropped out and he started writing because his writing skills are so great. He wrote for the Smothers Brothers. He wrote, started to write comedy. Um, Mercury's on the second house cusp and it's in Virgo, so it's in exaltation and domicile. So it's a very strong uh, Mercury. It's not in the first house. I mean, technically by quadrant, it still is where it, where it gains in, uh, directional strength. So even stronger again, but I consider this a second house Mercury because it's so close to the second house cusp and the same sign. So, but the second house deals with voice, deals with teaching, knowledge, family, assets things of that nature so his ability to speak his ability to write his ability to be in front of the camera to act to be in theater that's all very prominent all right and if we look at the 11th house the house of career success hopes wishes dreams communities he's got mars and uranus in gemini now here really is where the comedy comes from here's where the humor comes from obviously it's going to be channeled through his insanely bright ascendant you know and this fire helps fire and air are combustible right so like 
air is the basis for humor generally. And I, I see Aquarius number one, usually for comedians, Gemini number two. Um, Uranus also plays a very strong role. And then also fire signs to really bring it out, you know, to light it up and bring it out. Otherwise they could be a comedy writer if they don't have strong fighter, fire, fighter, fire. Um, cause it's not going to come out, right. They're not going to be an actual performer. Maybe they can be a comedy writer, you know, cause their energy is subdued. If they have too much water, then it's going to be hidden. But if they have a lot of fire, if Steve Martin is like tons of fire, right. in the ascendant fire, fire, the ascendant is a place where energy comes out and there's this fire on fire and a fire planet, the sun, tons of fire. Right. And <clears throat> And then Mars, the very hot planet. And then Uranus. Uranus is absurd, right? Uh, especially, you know, if it's Mars conjunct Uranus and Gemini, like in an air sign, that's, this is like, that's very funny, first of all. Um, because look at comedy. Go watch a comedy and think about Uranus. One of the things that makes us laugh is the unexpected. When people do things that are just completely... Oh my God, I didn't even, you know, like we don't think this consciously, but like try and observe it. When you laugh, it's something that you're not expecting. If you're expecting it, it's not very funny. If you're not expecting it, it's hilarious, right? And that's Uranus because it's out of the blue. And then Gemini is very, very spontaneous. And then Mars and, and Uranus in Gemini is just like action. Like, you know, it's just, it's just funny. It's funny. Um, and look at this. There's like no aspects to this. So in one sense, I mean, it's 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 even more potent because it's not losing energy to any other planets, to, ne to anything else. It's just, you know, it's in a prominent house, 11th house, community, groups, networks, career success, hopes, wishes, dreams. Um, you know, it's a very social house, third, seventh, 11th. So in groups and networks, you know. That's, you know, and he was incredibly popular. This is a house of popularity, a house of almost like cult pop, like cultish popularity, niche popularity because of the groups. They're gathered around a certain theme topic. Um, yeah. So that's very prominent for, for being a funny guy, which he is. Um, and then Jupiter, like I said, you know, if you look at synodic cycles, then Jupiter is very mature. So like, you know, that's probably why he went into philosophy because the Jupiter, mature Jupiter is, is wants to be philosophical. Wants to, it's not a young Jupiter. It's a, it's a mature Jupiter. It's, you know, trying to be philosophical, but his philosophy is tending towards um, smaller mercurial matters. And that's probably why that really added to his writing ability. It's not going to be very philosophical, but it's going to create a philosophy around humor and comedy, which he had, uh, which is fascinating. His philosophy tended towards, you know, his writing and comedy and all that. He does have Chiron conjunct Neptune. Chiron's not making any negative aspects. So it's, I mean, it's, it's conjunct Neptune. So this is just like making him even more strange and weird. Because Chiron has that ability, and you do see it in comedians strongly. Sometimes, like Woody Allen, is a strong Chiron. It's just adding to the absurdity. Chiron's the wounded reject. Um, Neptune is a planet of creativity and imagination, illusion, delusion, fantasy. Um, many things here. Um, you know, drug, drugs and alcohol as well. I but I don't think that I didn't read that that was a major thing in his life. I'm, I don't, you know, it could have played a role. I don't, you know, it's not uh, out of the question that he got into that stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't a major event for him. Um, and again, no major aspects. There is a light square to the nodes uh, and, and uh, Neptune, which can indicate some sort of destiny along the way something some faded events neptune relating to that movies movie stars uh film cinema uh creativity things like that third house is expression so i think this is just it's appropriate it's helping it's not the major 
factor, but it's just uh, it's adding to his um his uh you know who he is his you know actor writer comedian musician um yeah we do have a um debilitated moon in Scorpio in the fourth house and there was some difficulties in his childhood according to Wikipedia <clears throat> and. And, you know, since I'm doing so many of these and so quickly, I really don't have time to look for anything else other than, you know, Wikipedia. I just need the rundown. I need the cliff notes on somebody's life just to kind of make sense of their chart. So that's why it's, it's, it's you know, it's very Gemini of me. You know, it's just it's like superficially know a little about a lot of people and things like that. So um, that's what I do. Anyway, he said he hated his father and... You know, moon, we typically relate to mother and fourth house, mother, but fourth house is both parents. And moon sometimes can relate to father, um, oddly enough. You know, it, it, it's, it is a parental planet, generally mother, but, um, you know, father can be, you can see father through moon as well. So there is something here that, that um, he had, I wouldn't say a difficult childhood, but definitely it was not a happier part. It was not a brighter um part of his life and yeah the lord is uh mars mars ruling the ninth and the fourth so you know he's going into groups and communities um this is his happiness because mar the fourth house ruler is also what makes us happy so he wants to go into groups and communities in that are gemini in with his exalted Mercury, um, writing, speaking, uh, performing, being a funny man. That's what makes him happy. Because fourth Lord is one of the things that make us happy. But his, his, you know, a sore point for him would be his childhood. But notice that there's not many aspects. Like there's the light square to the ascendant off by four degrees. But there's a trine to the north node, which... Again, I mean, okay, you know, something there, not not a whole lot, but um, in Vedic astrology, North Node does cast a trine aspect. So uh, as he gets older, uh, this moon in Scorpio will become more prominent, even though it does represent his childhood. It's probably become a more uh, a sore point for him as he does get older. Um, his south nodes in Capricorn in the sixth house. So writing is, is where he where he uh, got his start. Writing comedy for Smothers Brothers. And let's look at his 12th house. So Saturn's ruling Capricorn. Saturn is in Cancer where it's in detriment. Conjunct Venus and North Node. Um, one of the interesting things about his Saturn, and we'll see a repeating theme of this, um, I'm just going to read from his Wikipedia. I'm not going to share it just because you know might mess things up. Um, sometimes I forget to switch back, but I'll read it. Um, first of all, he had all these philosophies about comedy. What if there was no punchline? What if there were no indicators? What if I created tension and never released it? What if I headed for climax, but all I delivered was anti-climax? See, that's that's the philosophy of comedy that he developed, Jupiter and Virgo. What would the audience do with all that tension? Theoret theoretically, it would have to come out sometime. But if I kept denying them the formality of a punchline, the audience would eventually pick their own place to laugh, essentially out of desperation. See, this is not a philosophy of life. That's why Mer Jupiter is um, does not... Is, it's in, in it has no dignity in Virgo. It's a very small philosophy, but philosophy nonetheless. And what I wanted to read was, um, I appeared on the Virginia Graham show circa 1970. I looked grotesque. I had a hairdo like a helmet with a blow dried in, which I blow dried to a puffy bouffant for reasons I no longer understand. I wore a frock coat and a silk shirt by the way, it's just hilarious reading his quotes, even. I just want to laugh just listening to his quotes. And just because I'm picturing him saying it. And my deliverer was mannered 
slow and self-aware. I had absolutely no authority. Saturn in Cancer, no authority. After reviewing the show, I was depressed for a week. Um, and that, I mean, okay, first of all, like when anyone has their first appearance, that, that's going to be true. But Saturn is authority, and Saturn in Cancer is not going to have any real authority. Or their authority is going to be very despotic, ty tyrannical. They're going to rule by it in a negative way. That's the other way it can go. But Sat that's more likely with a Saturn in Leo or Saturn in Aries, right? Saturn in Cancer, especially in the 12th house. That's not going to have, that's just going to, it feels very weak, right? Especially conjunct Venus. However, 12th house is a house of creativity and imagination. And Saturn conjunct Venus, uh, even though Saturn is not in good dignity here, I believe because North Node is conjunct Venus, that's why he's also um, an excellent banjo player. Now, he's not so excellent that he would have made a great name for himself on banjo alone. Maybe a small name, but not the, not the real success that he had with comedy. I think that, obviously, that's his real strength. And we can see that because, well, Saturn, I mean, obviously Saturn's in detriment here, but Saturn conjunct Venus, Saturn crystallizes and hardens whatever it touches. Uh, they say it starves the planet that it's conjunct as well, but um, it, it can also create like, like science, um, Saturn conjunct Mercury can create a scientist like because it's hardening the, the, the intellect, right? And Saturn conjunct Venus can create an artist. Uh, music is an art. So because Saturn is discipline, Saturn is hard work, Saturn is focus, Saturn is not fun. It's like, you're going to do good at this through lots of effort. And that's what he did. Like, he just practiced a lot. Um, and he became a good banjo player. And it's also where his North Node is. And so that music did become more prominent as he got older, which is what North Node represents. South Node represents first half of life. North Node represents second half of life. It's still similar because South Node's in Capricorn um, activating Saturn. North Node is in Cancer activating Moon, but Saturn is also here in the 12th house. So 12th house and Saturn are activating both times. So he started music when he was young, but he got more into it as he got older, which makes sense. But... 12th house is still creativity. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. Um, let's look at his uh, draconic chart. Now, I mean, if you compare his natal chart to um, who I did yesterday, Anthony Bourdain, it's like no compare. Anthony Bourdain's chart is so complicated. And if you take these two people as as individuals, you can just see Anthony Bourdain was just like full of conflict, where Steve Martin's quite simple in a sense. Like there's, there's just like, you know what I mean? Like there's so much like pain and tension in Anthony Bourdain and complications and, um, and then Steve Martin is just you know it's pretty simple, funny guy. You know, musician, creative, you know, it's really fascinating. And like, you know, it really reflects on their charts, like perfectly. It's just spot on. You cannot deny astrology when you, once you really understand it. It's undeniable. And that's fantastic. All right. So his moon in the 12th house is in cancer. So it's in domicile. So he gets a lot of happiness from creativity because as always, draconic chart is our like true colors. It's like how we feel on the inside. It has to do with our past conditioning. It has to do with the moon and the north node of the moon. It's very karmic, very energetic. Um, it deals with um, the past, but also the future. And just like our, our, our inner emotional uh, needs, how we feel on the inside. So his moon, which is our emotional satisfaction, is actually, so he's not as miserable as he you know, might appear from his childhood. He's actually quite content to be creative, play music, be just, you know, just be a creative, creative type of guy. 
um, whether it's acting or writing or playing music, he, he's really happy to be creative. We see a lot more Gemini influence here. A Jupiter again, um, Jupiter is opposite Sagittarius and Gemini. And there is that, that again, that's some very similar thing with um, philosophy that it's geared towards um, his, his own uh, comedy and just a small mind, like, no, it's, it's not small minded. It's just a, the, the Jupiter is kind of channeled into something non Jupiterian, you know, his writing, his comedy, things of that nature. But this is adding to Gemma, this is adding to his comedy, obviously. Um, it's just making it more deep and more well rounded. And like I said, he's an excellent comedian, I think. That's my personal opinion. Sun is very prominent in the 10th house in Taurus. And, you know, Taurus deals with all things creative because it's ruled by Venus. Arts, creativity, beauty, um, luxury, security, wealth, food. So, I mean, directional strength. Sun is very, very prominent in the 10th house. Um, Pluto signifies a very powerful career. And he, he was, I mean, he was like, he's incredibly, he's, he's been on S he's hosted SNL 15 times, only second to Alec Baldwin, but I think he's way better than Alec Baldwin, who I do not like, who actually killed someone on, in a movie set and suffered no consequences for it. That's outrageous. That's like absolutely outrageous. And, and he's like, he should he's he murdered someone he should go to jail anyway i i i hate the our, how our system grants favors for if you're a celebrity famous or whatever it's really unjust anyway that's a side note pluto conjunct and then look his ascendant is conjunct as mc and his draconic chart so very powerful career um very prominent there saturn again in Aries, so it's debilitated here in his draconic chart. So, like, this is fascinating to me because his Saturn is in detriment and then in debilitation, uh, natally and draconically. And look at Steve Martin. Does Steve Martin look like a Saturnian kind of guy? Do we want him as a leader? Do we want him as an authority figure? Do we want him as, like, you know, the governator, like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Do we want him as, um, you know, mayor or, or president? Or, no, he's too, he doesn't have a strong Saturn, you know? Uh, Saturn in, in Aries can be tyrannical, but it doesn't have the dignity. It doesn't have, and this is only, this is not, this is not going to show, this is almost like on the inside. So he, you know, he might be kind of, he might have like a little bit of a temper when he doesn't get his way, like babyish, like, do what I say, damn it. You know, like, but kind of on the inside. You know, because Saturn in Aries wants to rule by authority, um, but not with, not out of, it's, it's tyrannical. It's a bit tyrannical because Aries is just like, you know, kind of like, just, just do it already. Like, Durr! and Saturn needs respect. You know, it's an authority. It's an elder. It's the law. Like you have to respect that. And that's, that's a good Saturn. A Saturn that people respect. Right, but Saturn doesn't get any respect here. Um, and Venus in, is in Aries as well here, and that's not not good. Um, well, it's not, it's not terrible. It just has no dignity. No dignity. No, no dignity. Um, and that's interesting. But I, I, that's part of um, it's the ninth house. So his his ninth house again is not um, you know strong. Which he dropped out of college, so that would also be a ninth house signification. He's not religious. Um, he dropped out of college, and um, his philosophy is very, you know, geared towards his own, you know, comedy and work and stuff like that. Uh, it's probably a good philosophy in regards to, like, he's probably, you know, really well thought of thought like really well-developed philosophy of comedy and things like that you know what i mean Just cool you know good friend uh because it is mature right like i said anyway um then the eighth house we have 
Mars and Uranus in Pisces. What's interesting is if you look at the flow, this is really fascinating because, all right, Moon is in Cancer, so it's in domicile. But then we have these planets in Gemini, disposited by Mercury. So 11th house in the 10th house. Mercury is in Taurus. It's 10th house in the 9th house, because it's the 9th house cusp. And then um, Venus is in Aries, ruled by Mars. So ninth house in the eighth house. So all the energy is going back. And then Mars in 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 uh, Pisces, ruled by Jupiter. So it's going, it has this flow here, uh, but it's all in the top. So this is very prominent, very well seen, except for the eighth house. But it also shows that um, he has some deep uh, sort of secretive occult leanings something having to do with the eighth house it could be sexuality he could be very sexual like but in secret like he's keeping it hidden um and because his chart is so non-conflictual it's not coming out but he might have some hidden things going on some secrets um that we don't know about like strong you know like just sexuality um saturn by the way speaking of sexuality saturn's ruling is the seventh house and his relationships are not very great either like he's had a bunch of them and they just um i think he has a daughter um but he keeps it seems like he keeps having relationships and then they they don't last that long or he gets married and divorced and again that relates to his saturn that's not dignified and in the 12th house of loss so that, that probably also has something to do with it so anyway, I, I think this really says a lot about Steve Martin. Also that the North Node is conjunct Venus and that music becomes more and more prominent as he gets older. Like he does tours with bluegrass. He has, he's made bluegrass albums. He's made musical albums. And that we could see with North Node conjunct Venus and Saturn and Cancer in the 12th house. And um, yeah. Um, that sort of thing does make him very happy because we can see his draconic moon is in cancer, like I said already. Anyway, that's Steve Martin. As always, the stuff is uncanny. It really, really, really works. Like once you understand it, if you just take the time to to look beyond the surface, if there's nothing, it's not some, you know, gimmick at all. It's really amazing. All right, so that was a rundown on Steve Martin. And hit the like button, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, share it, get your friends to subscribe. Um, hit me up on my website, macroastrology.com, or email me at macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com if you'd like a reading. Um, comment, uh, tell me who you'd like me to do next. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right, thanks.